Calcific tendonitis of the shoulder is incredibly painful and can be very difficult to treat. And for how common calcific tendonitis is, there's still a lot of debate on what the best treatment option is. Physical therapy or cortisone injections, extracorporeal shockwave therapy or ultrasound guided needle lavage. Let's look at what some new clinical trials say about what the best treatment options are for those who suffer from calcific tendonitis of the shoulder. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Peng here. My goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so calcific tendonitis in the shoulder is caused by deposition of calcium crystals in the rotator cuff tendons. We're still not entirely sure why people form calcium deposits in their tendons. We think it's due to some type of abnormal local response to stress or trauma, but again, we're not too sure. What's clear is that our bodies don't like the fact that there is a big calcium deposit in the tendon. So the tendon responds with inflammation and that's why we call it calcific tendonitis. That's also why people tend to have activity related pain, especially with overhead or reaching motions. And presumably, as long as that calcium deposit is in the tendon, it's gonna lead to problems and it's going to lead to pain. Now there's still a lot of debate on what the best treatment is for getting rid of this calcium deposit. Treat Treatment options generally include oral anti-inflammatory pain medications, physical therapy, and cortisone injections. But over the last few years, newer treatment options have been explored, and these include extracorporeal shockwave therapy, as well as ultrasound-guided percutaneous needle tenotomy and lavage. So I want to go over these two options really quickly. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy involves a machine that applies high energy pressure pulses to an affected area. It's theorized that these pressure pulses help stimulate metabolism, it helps enhance blood circulation, and it helps accelerate healing. These effects are especially pronounced when the pressure pulses are applied to damaged tissues. Multiple randomized controlled trials have shown that extracorporeal shockwave therapy is an excellent treatment option for calcific tendonitis. And what about ultrasound? guided needle lavage. This is a minimally invasive in-office procedure where under ultrasound guidance, the calcium deposit is punctured with a needle and then irrigated. When successful, a large amount of calcium crystals are aspirated from the deposit, and this helps remove part of the calcium lesion and breaks it down into smaller pieces to promote accelerated absorption. Multiple randomized control trials have shown that this is an excellent treatment option for calcific tendonitis. But if both extracorporeal shockwave therapy and ultrasound guided needle lavage work, which one of these is better? This study looked to answer that question. This is a randomized control trial comparing high energy extracorporeal shockwave therapy to ultrasound guided needling for the treatment of symptomatic calcific tendonitis in people who were unresponsive to conservative treatment. They randomized 82 patients to one of the treatment groups and followed them over time. The researchers found that at the one year follow-up, both groups had similar improvements to pain, function and disability. However, the patients randomized to the ultrasound guided needling group had significantly smaller calcium deposits when compared to the shockwave group. Moreover, only 22% of patients required retreatment in the needling group. Almost half of the patients in the shockwave group required additional treatments because of persistent symptoms. The authors go on to conclude that both techniques are successful in improving function and pain with high satisfaction rates after one year of follow-up. However, ultrasound guided needling is more effective in eliminating the calcific deposit and the amount of treatments was greater in the shockwave group. These findings were also consistent with a previous network meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. This systematic review included seven randomized controlled trials and looked to compare results when comparing treatments including shockwave therapy, ultrasound-guided needling, and corticosteroid injection. The authors found that ultrasound-guided needling plus shockwave therapy together resulted in significantly better pain and decreased size of the calcium deposit when compared to shockwave alone. 
However, they found that ultrasound guided needling plus corticosteroid injections seem to have the best outcomes in terms of pain and size of calcium deposit. The authors go on to say that the evidence points to ultrasound guided needling as the treatment of choice for non-surgical options for the treatment of calcific tendonitis of the shoulder. So it seems like there is rather robust evidence for the use of needle lavage. But how does this compare to just exercise therapy or physical therapy? Therapy. This study compared physical therapy to ultrasound guided needling and to cortisone injections. They wanted to know which treatment was the least effective and would go on to require surgical resection of the calcium deposit. They found that patients undergoing physical therapy had the highest failure rate and were statistically more likely to require surgery when compared to those getting a corticosteroid injection and those who got ultrasound guided needle lavage. Okay, so what are my conclusions from these studies and how do I approach calcific tendonitis of the shoulder? Well, I tend to be extremely aggressive when I treat these conditions. After all, as long as there is a calcium deposit in the rotator cuff tendon, we can't expect the biomechanics of the shoulder to be normal. I suspect this is why physical therapy had the highest failure rate. Physical therapy is focused on strengthening the shoulder muscles, and of course this is important and this is going to help a lot of people. But if you don't do anything to address the calcium deposit, it can always get re-aggravated and cause more pain. That's why it doesn't surprise me that people who only do physical therapy would go on to require more interventions and possibly surgery. And this is why I recommend a combination of ultrasound guided needle lavage as well as a subacromial corticosteroid injection. I then have my patients start an exercise program either at home or at physical therapy. Taking this aggressive combined approach helps accelerate the breakdown and reabsorption of the calcium deposit. Exercise therapy will then address any weaknesses or biomechanical problems in the shoulder. Check out this video next for a sample rehabilitation program for rotator cuff disorders. Thanks for watching.